Hi, and welcome back to the Gosforth Handy Man Tips Library. Before I start, a really, really quick bit of housekeeping I need to get through. I'll try and keep it under 30 seconds. First of all, don't forget the Measuring Up podcast is now live and you can get to it at measuringuppodcast.com. Secondly, if you haven't done so already, don't forget to subscribe to my good friend and podcast co-host Peter Millard at 10minuteworkshop.tv. Finally, don't forget, you've only got two weeks left to enter the Maker Central giveaway that I'm running at the moment. The closing date for that is Thursday, the 26th of April. 2018. Links to the podcast, Peter's channel and the Maker Central giveaway are all in the description below. How did I do? I've also got a quick Patreon update for you as well, but I'll save that for the end of the video, but some quite exciting things on Patreon for you. So today's tip is all about attaching stuff to walls where you've got like a gap or a cavity at the back of the thing that you're trying to attach onto the wall. A classic is like a kitchen unit or a kitchen cabinet. Sometimes wall cabinets as well can be problematic with this sort of thing. My tip is to use these little magic things called space plugs. I must admit the guys at Space Plug sent us these ages ago and I've only just got round to making a video about them but I've been using these on jobs for quite a while now and they are absolutely awesome. They've been out for quite a long time to be honest but uh, I thought I'd make a quick video about them in case you've not seen these before. Before I show you how to use these let me just knock up a very rough and quick pretend kitchen cabinet so you can see what the problem is and you can see how these things really really help. There we go, please don't judge my cabinet. <laughs> it's a very, very temporary thing. But what you would then generally do, or what kitchen fitters would normally do, is put some sort of bracket on these inside corners here. Get in there. Kind of like that. Pretend this is the wall and obviously the cabinet would be on legs or whatever. And then you would attach to that into the wall. The trouble is these are a pain in the backside because you've got to kind of get the screw in at a funny angle like that. And that would be your cabinet in. The problem is, well, you've got several problems here because first of all, you're putting a screw into potentially a plug in the wall at an angle. And the plug's probably not going to be at an angle, unless you've drilled it through at an angle, you might have done. Anyway, the point is, is that doing screws into plugs at an angle is a pain in the backside. The other thing is that it's very common that you don't want the cabinet completely butt up against the wall. There could be any number of reasons, so if I just take these screws back out, take me goggles off, don't really need it for that. But you might find that if the wall's not level, if that's out, you might need the cabinet tip forward at an angle, for example. So you might need a bit of a gap at the top here, in which case you're then gonna have to offset your brackets. Sometimes you can then run out of wood to physically screw into, or you're gonna have to use bigger brackets at the top there. So with space plugs, all you do is adjust this to the size of the gap that you want. just by twirling the thingy. We'll drill a hole through first because it'll make it a bit easier. So you drill a couple of holes. That's, I'm using a five mil hole there. They come with a drill bit. How awesome is that? Just comes with, I think it's a six. A little six mil drill bit that comes with a six mil masonry bit. Nice long one as well. Just canny. You're gonna end up with a lot of them. I don't know if they need to do that, to be honest, but I suppose. So what you would normally do, you could drill all the way through, right through into the wall, knock through your six mil red plug straight into the wall and screw straight through. Obviously I'm into wood here, so it's a bit easier. Just get a big screw, set your gap. This one. And that's it, done, absolutely solid. And of course, if you're wanting a gap here, 
because you need to level the unit up and the wall's not level. All you do, loosen your screw a bit, widen up the gap on here until you've got it how you want it, and then tighten it up, not with a drill. And that's it. Done and dusted. And the wonderful thing about this as well, it means that once the worktops are on, if for any reason you have to take the cabinet out, which obviously with these sort of brackets, once the worktop's in, there's no way you can take these brackets out, not without smashing up the entire cabinet. But if for whatever reason you did want to take the cabinet out and swap it for a different cabinet or whatever, it's just simply a case of just swap, <laughs> taking these out. Another thing, for getting your next cabinet in, you're saying, well, what do you do about, how do you hold your thingy in place, your space plug in place? Easy. So just get your plug, get the fat end, bit of super glue, bit of activator, make sure it's lined up. Got freakishly red hands again. What the hell's going on with hands in this workshop? I think it's because I haven't seen any sun for six months. There we go, that's glued on. Pop that back. And then if it's in a hard to reach place where you can't physically hold that on, you can pre-mount them, pop your screw through into the wall. And by the way, I'm just using here, these are I think four inch, 10 gauge screws that I'm using here. I tend to use 10 gauge screws for just about everything. They tend to be quite a good balance between not being ridiculously big and the work in red and brown plugs. I saw someone complaining on a review, I think on Screwfix or Amazon saying that they couldn't get screws long enough. And this ironically was on Screwfix who sell every type of screw you can possibly imagine including much, much, much bigger screws than these. So I don't see why you're ever gonna run into a problem. Plenty sticking through there to get into a plug, more than enough. And I find as well, if you've super glued it on, it's enough just to kind of hold it, but you can just pull it off. It's, it's not like a mega permanent bond. So, but it's enough to hold it in place while you're kind of getting it in the right position. Another option as well, if you don't really want to use super glue, another option is just to use a, a hot glue gun as well. A hot glue gun can work quite well for that. So there you go, space plugs. Awesome stuff, really, really impressed with them. I'll just carry them around in my general kind of bits and pieces box, my plugs box that I take on every single job because they're such a problem solver. They come in two different sizes. The ones that I was showing you there are for 30 to 50 millimeter gaps. And then you've got these slightly bigger ones, which are 45 to 80 mil gaps. And these packs, these are the 10 pack ones. You can also get them, I think in 50 packs as well. But these you get 10 in a pack and it comes with a masonry drill bit as well, which is absolutely spot on. As I say, I don't think they need to give away the, the drill bit. I wouldn't object to having to buy a drill bit to go with these, but if they want to give us lots and lots of drill bits, then fair enough, not complaining. I'll pop links in the description to all of the ones that you can get in the UK. I think they're available in Europe. I'm not so sure about the States. I don't know. As and when they're available in the States, I'll try and pop links in the description but I don't think they're available in the States yet. Of course, you don't just have to use them for kitchen cabinets as well. You can use them for alcove units. You know, you can drill through from the sides into your, like into the alcove and go through. If this has to fill up a, a gap at either side of your units, that can work really well. As I say, I just carry them around from job to job. I think they're so handy to have kicking about. Post in the comments below of any other nifty ideas you've got for these little things. Before I finish, a quick Patreon update for you that I hope you'll find useful. At the minute, over on my Patreon, I go into like job pricing and a lot of behind the scenes stuff and quite a bit of stuff in a bit more detail than I go into on the main channel. And at the moment, that kind of behind the scenes stuff is only open to $3 and $5 patrons but a few people have said that they can't really afford the five dollars a month but they really could make use of like the pricing information and stuff like that that i'm putting out there so i've decided to basically simplify the whole thing 
And as soon as I hit 100 patrons, I'm gonna get rid of all the tiers and I'm just gonna make it so that you've got access to everything from $1 and above. So all you have to do is pledge a dollar a month and you'll get access to all of the behind the scenes stuff and all the pricing stuff and everything. Obviously, if you've already pledged $3 or $5, you don't have to change your pledge, but you can. So please just help spread the word and for a dollar a month, you can have access to all of that behind the scenes stuff as soon as I hit the 100 patron mark. Just visit patreon.com slash Handyman and you can do your pledge on there. That's it for this week. Apparently next week it's going to get warmer and we're going to be out of this eternal winter that we've been in and my hands might not be bright red anymore. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to hit subscribe if you haven't done so already. I shall see you next time. Bye.